Hey guys, what's going on? Inside this box is a revolution. What if I told you that building your own lithium battery pack mm -hmm. was as simple as putting cells in a TV remote, wrapping it up in shrink wrap, and basically just driving off? That could be possible, and that's what we're looking at today. It all starts with these beautiful PCBs from PCBWay. And uh, PCBWay has been my sponsor for a long time, for a couple of years, and they make just the best PCBs. You can go to their website and check out um, all the different kinds of PCBs that they can do, starting from only $5. Now, these PCBs are done in matte black, and they were uh, beautifully wrapped in uh, vacuum-sealed shrink wrap. I ordered five of these. Now, what exactly is this? And... Um, where are we trying to go from here? Now the thing that drove me um, to build this, and I've been thinking about this for over over a year, is uh, that people reached out to me uh, when building their fun wheels and said, well, we don't have any experience in building battery packs and building battery packs requires a lot of skill, uh, some experience, and a lot of safety considerations. So it's not for the average Joe to just pick up a spot welder and do it. Um, the second consideration is the cost. A good spot welder could cost anywhere from $250 up to $300 or $400. And if you're building a fun wheel on a budget, uh, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? So my main motivation was to get the cost of building a fun wheel down for the average guy who doesn't want to build battery packs or doesn't have a spot welder. Now, if you're building multiple battery packs and selling them or using them for your own, um, you know, skateboards, fun wheels, whatever, it makes sense to invest in a, in a spot welder. But if you want to build just one battery pack for one fun wheel, it doesn't make sense to buy a $250 spot welder, learn how to spot weld, and do all of that safely and, you know, have the risk of blowing things up. Um, so that's what led me to build um, the battery PCB. Now, uh, the first thing you should look for when you want to build a new thing is, is it already done by somebody else? And 90% of the time, the answer is yes. People have tried to solve problems. So an honorable mention to Mika from ebikeschool.com, who started building um, easy-to-build kits for battery packs called the Brunsd. If you don't know, you should check him out. Really cool guy. Um, he's got a YouTube channel called ebikeschool.com. Um, he built the Brunt kit where you can just uh, get those plastic spacers and put your batteries in between and, you know, kind of um, just lock them together and then screw uh, screw them with, uh, with nickel strips. Now, that was really cool, and I would have gone with the idea, but the problem is that with a fun wheel, we are constrained with how much space we have, and getting those big bulky blocks in was impossible. Uh, the other people who are doing something similar are Nisi, um, N-W-E-S-E. They are from somewhere in Europe, and they build really cool 3D printed stuff that where you can insert uh, braided copper or, or um, nickel strips and make battery packs. And it's kind of modular and stuff like that, but again, that was too space consuming and kind of complicated. Um, I wanted something really, really simple, um, so that's why I came up with this idea. Now the problem was again the space because if you want to the battery box again this one is an old battery box that I used so um, pardon me for all the mess but uh, there is hardly enough space to fit two lithium cells together. So if you see these old lithium cells if you put them together there's hardly enough space for just the lithium cells um, and there's no space if you uh, want to get some additional things that hold the cells together. So that's why I wanted to design a battery PCB that didn't take um, any space or took minimum space. Um, and even with that, you could see that it, is, it barely fits uh, the PCB. And I want to talk a little bit about the design phase of this because I know most of you who watch my channel are interested in this kind of stuff rather than just seeing the finished product. So the cell holders I used are these cell holders. and if you want to put them side by side in the PCB, so for example, if you take this one and this one and I put them on the edges, you can see that they are overlapping. That's a problem. Um, 
and it took me a while to figure out, uh, you know, the best kind of cell holders and, um, uh, you know, the configuration to put them on a PCB. And um, if you can see that, if you, I don't know if you already noticed it, you can see that the battery holders are actually staggered, which means that if one holder goes this way, um, the other one doesn't uh, come end to end because I, I couldn't get the PCB to fit while they were uh, stacked like that end to end. You can see these ends are kind of uh, protruding out of the PCB. So what I had to do was if I put one PCB this way, I had to put the other this way. And you can see there's a bit of an overlap here. There's a bit of an interlock in um, inside the PCB. And that was the only way I could get them to fit. Now the other, um, by the way, the other guy I want to mention is Jehu Garcia, um, known as Jag. He's got a YouTube channel too. He builds all kind of uh, battery modules for power banks. So um, yes, I used some of his inspiration, but uh, those battery packs, if you see, are um, don't have any space constraint because they are for a, um, a like a a solar battery pack. So uh, they could be sitting on the side of your house. They don't have any space constraint. So um, uh, what you see in his modules is just a PCB and then that stacks on top of another PCB with a spacer of some sort. So that's really easy. But when you have space constraint and you want to get 24 cells and a PCB and the holders in a small box of 25 by 20, uh, that becomes a problem. Um, oh, by the way, if you didn't notice, this is a two-sided PCB. So the, uh, these holders would go on either sides. So 12 cells on this side and 12 cells on the other side. That makes a 12s 2p pack with 24 cells so you can you can see it's really a challenge uh, to get all the holders um, and the PCB and the batteries inside a small box the other thing that Jeho did was um, for ease of assembly for the user was that he put um, all the positives and negatives in um, in a parallel row so you would kind of insert all your cells uh, with positive up uh, and that makes it simpler for the average user. You know, you, you don't have to think which one is forward, which one is reverse, and um, that way you don't have a chance of shorting your cells and potentially causing um, a hazard. The reason I didn't do that is because if you see one of Yahoo's PCBs and if you put two cells here and if you want to connect them in series, you kind of have to go behind the PCB and, and take a trace um, bring it up here and then connect it to the positive. What it does is it wastes a lot of power because if you have a trace going all the way up it's carrying current and um, it's uh, dissipating heat and energy and it's a waste. So what I did was I uh, reversed them. Uh, that way if this one is positive negative here the next positive comes here which means the trace has to be only this short. And that's kind of the point. So if you see the first uh, cell which is here uh, this is your battery's positive, 50 volts. First, cells come, first cell comes here, the second one just comes here. And uh, the distance that current has to travel is only this much, from first cell negative to the second cell positive. Um, sorry, this way. And then for the second cell, uh, for the third cell, it goes here. And then the current only has to travel from the second cell negative to the third positive, uh, this amount. And then the fourth one is here, and so on and so forth. And this uh, creates like a zigzag pattern with a 12th negative ending here. Um, so that was kind of uh, the thought process and the design process behind designing a compact PCB that could fit in an enclosure, have all the cells and everything. So actually, let's go ahead and look at the PCB. Bye. All right, so this is um, the PCB with the batteries inside the fun wheel. And um, I did test it out before making the video. I didn't have any battery pop out or I didn't see any reducing current or voltage sag um, because that was one of my main concerns is that if you look at uh, the battery the cell holder, uh, the battery is going to sit um, and press against one of these contacts. And the contact area between the battery and the strip is uh, very, very narrow. Compared to, say, a spot welder where you spot weld two or three or six spots and the whole nickel strip is uh, connected to the positive battery, I think this one has a lesser contact area. And that was one of the reasons I chose these cell holders, not the one with holes, 
because I wanted a large surface area. And if you'd seen the batteries inside, um, maybe it's hard to see, but I have reinforced these areas with more solder so that the current carrying capacity increases and there's less heat generated. And that's the reason I, I kept these um, exposed and not uh, within the PCB. Same here, I uh, kept them exposed and I um, you know, reinforced them with a lot of solder. The battery carrying capacity increases. Now this one has 12 cells on the top, 12 cells at the bottom, and um, it's a 12 S 2P pack. Um, and this yellow, um, this yellow uh, box is, um, um, is is a newly designed box uh, that my friend Remy um, designed. And this one has um, this one is much thicker, so it can carry more batteries. So you could um, actually fit 14 S 2P or a 16 S 2P in it if you want to run a higher voltage controller. So um, this box allows me to get my PCB and my cells, everything in there. Uh, as you can see, it's a very tight fit, even with the uh, cell holders staggered together and kind of close together. But it worked. Um, I, it was a lot of uh, time and effort designing the PCB to kind of fit everything together in a very constrained space. And it was quite scary, um, you know, putting these cells inside, um, um, not knowing uh, if something would, you know, short or blow up. Uh, but obviously, I tested the PCB before I put the cells in, and I actually made a mistake um, in this PCB, so I'll have to redesign it. Uh, one of the balance leads that leads um, to these uh, balance connectors was actually shorting with one of these cells. So if I were to not check it and put all the cells, one of the cells would uh, short with one of the other cells and that would um, have caused something um, not very desirable. So um, um, so the question is why doesn't every other manufacturer do this? Why doesn't one wheel do this or other people do this? So you know you can get your uh, battery pack PCB, put the cells in and drive off. Well, a couple of reasons, but the biggest one of them is safety, because the average Joe doesn't know uh, how to handle lithium-ion batteries. Uh, they think it's just a cell, like an alkaline battery, they can do whatever with it, but it's actually quite dangerous. Now, I've covered that in my video where I say, um, um, I teach you how to safely assemble a lithium-ion um, pack. And um, you guys know that lithium-ion carries a lot of energy, um, and if it's shorted, um, it can... Uh, you know, dispose that energy or get rid of that energy very, very fast and cause um, a catastrophic event. Um, and that's one of the reasons manufacturers don't do that. They put that, put, put all your batteries in a pack, seal it, um, and just give you the end product. And that's the safe way and the correct way to do it. However, if this PCB is made safe enough, I think um, I can get it into consumer production and it uh, the pros outweighs the cons. The pros being that you don't have to buy a spot welder, you don't have to buy a built battery pack worth $250 uh, or more. You could just buy one of these PCBs. Um, I don't know the price point of these at this point, but they would probably be around $50 or so. And then buy, you know, a cell a dollar, and basically you have a battery pack. So what's happening here is um, I put this for the charge, which goes into the XLR charge port, so I can uh, you know charge the battery. Um, and then I've got this 50 amp fuse here. I'm testing it at a um, 50 amp. I think that's good enough. And then this goes to the fun wheel. Some other issues that I was considering was um, you know vibrations, like putting cells in a cell holder and vibrating them at 20 kilometers an hour is not the best idea. If one of the cells was to pop out, you would have an instant nose dive, um, and the cell that popped out could short with another cell. So that was one of the uh, one of the key um, um, uh, key aspects of designing it uh, to keep in mind. Mm, so uh, the way we eliminated that was to make sure that the box was big to fit this, but not big enough so that the cells could vibrate. Um, now uh, the foot plate that goes on top of it presses it very nicely but not too much. Um, and from the bottom again, um, it is pressed so that the uh, the cell doesn't fall off the holders. Again, these holders are really nice. I mean, even if there were vibrations, 
Let's demonstrate that. Even if there are any vibrations, they, they, they wouldn't fall off. You see the, uh, the cell holders hold the cells very nicely. So these are actually pretty good cell holders and I'm very happy with them. Um, um, so when when can this go into production? Um, well, I've still got a couple of things to figure out. First of all, is the battery management system. I'm looking for a battery management system that is small enough to fit, you know, one of these gaps here, or maybe in the front somewhere if uh, if you push the PCB back. Um, and the other issue is I want cell level fuses, which means um, every cell uh, connecting to the next cell has a fuse in between, so that if something bad happens to one cell. It, the fuse blows and it's uh, isolated from the pack. Now again, you can see the challenge of doing that is that there is basically no space to get the fuses in and then the fuses would uh, increase the cost of the PCB for you guys. So those are the two challenges uh, right now, um, but um, once that's done, I would be pretty confident to roll this uh, into the market. So for now, um, yeah, that was uh, just um, what I've been doing in my downtime. And um, Hope you guys like it. I will keep you guys updated with how things go with the battery PCB. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, keep engineering, and I'll see you next time.